organ handover, organ inauguration, that's a big word. Um, I hopefully everybody's got a sheet of uh, proceedings for this evening. Um, sort of estimated that it will take about half hour, maybe 40 minutes or so. Um, as you can see, there's uh, a number of items there, uh, three of which are congregational singing, so hopefully you'll be able to do that. <coughs> With us, we'll start with Psalm 150, then I will say a few words of thanks to Hans and Trudy and other helpers, and then we'll sing Psalm 8. You might notice that with Psalm 8, we have some um, special arrangements where we sing verse 1, all of us together, then we have women and children separately, and we have verse 3, where we sing all of us, and then we have the men singing by themselves, verse 4 and then we'll all sing the final verse. Then point five is uh, it's Hans's turn to demonstrate the, the organ, particularly demonstrating the benefits and features of second manual, and you'll illustrate that with the help of a number of uh, uh, pieces of organ literature. And he finishes up with the toccata on Psalm 146, and uh, straight after that we will sing our final song uh, Psalm 146, one, verse 1 and 2. And then Mike will close with us in prayer. So, Mike, can I keep the mic on? Okay. Wonderful singing. Well, we should, we should be with a psalm like that. <clears throat> well, uh, brothers and sisters, just a few formal words of thanks, particularly at the address of Hans. Where's Trudy? Over there. And uh, other helpers as well. We're gathered here to formally hand over the organ with its second manual. 
So we can say the finished product. In 2009, as the plaque says, uh, our brother built and delivered our one manual organ, and we've used it ever since, uh, with the built-in possibility of having a second manual one day. Uh, two years ago or so, I can't quite remember the exact time, uh, Hans approached us and asked, how about it? Uh, the organ is designed to have two manuals. And uh, I was all excited about it, of course. And some others are, were as well. And so in response to Hans, we uh, asked him what would it involve and how much it will cost. And his answer was nothing. It will cost you nothing. It will cost you some labour from the congregation members. It costs some, probably some costs, some sundry costs of materials and glues and things. And he also indicated that he had heaps of stuff left over from the Launceston organ. And so we were in a beautiful situation of having a second manual build built uh, at virtually no cost other than uh, yeah, some of the fixed costs. Now, since that time, and of course, needless to say, we quite gladly gave Hans the, the go-ahead. And since that time, much water has gone under the bridge, hasn't it, Hans? Um, manufacturer of wooden pipes, and um, Mike's got, um, after this uh, uh, get-together, he will play a slideshow of photos that were taken uh, after each of the sessions at Hans's place, and you will see uh, when, I, when I talk about pipes, um, as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the making of the pipes, the, the, the extra ones that were needed, was the most exciting bit of work because other things were, were nice too, problem solving along the way. But the making of wooden pipes was, was excellent. There's actually a couple of wooden pipes somewhere, Hans, uh, over here. Uh, so maybe the little kids might be interested in having a look at that later on too. And maybe have a go. <clears throat> so at the end of 2023, so that's late last year, um, everything was finished. The tuning was more or less done, except for the fine tuning. We were busy with that still this year. And everything was completed. And we have an instrument now uh, with lots more possibilities. You might have noticed that on Sunday. I have certainly noticed it. And uh, we have lots more possibilities to accompany the congregational singing. And uh, the embellishment of the worship services was greatly uh, enhanced by the the extended organ. So, Hans, we're very much indebted to you. Uh, first of all, for your generous offer of your time, your experience, which is by now very vast, and the materials. And I personally enjoyed the time very much, time of fellowship, time of cups of coffee and chats, and of course, solving problems along the way towards completions. And, now and again there were problems, but I, I've got to give it to you, hand it to you. You do not shy away from problem solving. You have a vast experience behind you of working with wood and materials in general, and uh, uh, no problem was too big. And uh, that was also very, very exciting. So, Hans, thank you very much also on behalf of the congregation for giving us an instrument worthy and capable of enhanced accompaniment. And of course, that's a very intended pun, um, enhanced, enhanced accompaniment. Trudy, I'd also like to thank you very much for, first of all, allowing your husband to be away so often, either in his workshop or here in Lagana. Uh, big pun? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Um, so, you supported your husband through the process uh, and for the cups of coffee and the, the chats, they were very much enjoyable. Andrew is also here. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for your support. Um, Andrew is a very enthusiastic helper. He's learning to play the organ and, uh, and he was able to help out with lots of small jobs, shall we say, Hans, sort of Andrew has a smaller fingers and hands than we do, and he also could fit into places that I certainly could not fit into. 
Uh, Jane, I shouldn't forget you. You have also made a contribution, namely the, uh, the, uh, the labels for the stops. They were all hand-painted. So thank you very much. That looks very professional and uh, beautiful. Mike also helped out in the first stages of, the, of pulling the, the tow boards out. So thank you, Mike, for your help as well. And hopefully I haven't forgotten anybody in the process. Um, now, the hard part was for us to come up with a token of thanks to you, Hans. I, I, you know, we realised that you have done this work pro Deo, uh, but uh, we want, as a congregation, uh, to present you with a token of thanks. Now, what do you give a man like you? You got everything. Uh, judging by your workshop, you got every tool under the sun. If you look in your house, you got every musical instrument under the sun and more. So our problem was really solved when we heard that you were going to WA. And uh, we thought, well, travelling, house setting for somebody and travelling around the place costs money. So what we want to do as congregation is to give you an envelope with some spending money, uh, uh, which you'll be able to do together with your wife. It's not all for you. Uh, uh, spending money for you and you can do what you like with that go out for dinner or something or whatever you want to do yeah. um, so we'd like to give that to you shortly uh, let's do that now actually um, so Hans would you like to come forward and I'd like to present you officially with a card yeah. uh, with a message in it and a, a token of our heartfelt thanks for yeah. all your hard work yeah. On the organ, yeah. behind it, everything. So, there you go. Right. So, after the singing of Psalm 8, which we'll do now, uh, we'll sing all the verses in the way indicated. Hans will have some time to demonstrate the organ uh, with a variety of different things. So, let's sing together now. Um, Psalm 8 speaks about God's grandeur in creation.
Dobro, da ima pokače. Bola ti što zvijek. Kako da nije sam ja. Well, thank you for organizing this evening about the pipe organ. It's a very old instrument. It existed already in the Roman times, and most churches in the Middle Ages had an organ, particularly the city churches. However, people didn't sing with the organ. Not at all. It was just an organ to be played as a form of public entertainment. You know, there are some cities they have bells in the tower. Well, the organ had the same function. On market days, people walked in the churches, they were always open. Dogs and cats in there as well. And they listened to someone playing the organ. That was it. Then came the Reformation. Still, the organ was not used because Calvin was not so much in favor of using the pipe organ. It was an instrument that belonged to the Roman Catholic churches and shouldn't have a place in the Reformation, in the Reformed churches. So they sang the Psalms without an organ. Who was leading then the congregation? That was a pre-center. Someone was standing up in front, conducting the congregation, had a loud voice, for mind you, in these big cities, you could expect over a thousand people in church. And that man had to lead the congregation. It was just about an impossible task that led to a lot of confusion and noises that you wouldn't like to hear. A brother of us from the Reformed churches in the Netherlands became a hymnologist, someone who specializes in the knowledge of psalms and hymns. And he got the post of, um, uh, as of hymnologist at the University of Groningen. He did a study on the psalm singing in the past and titled the book he wrote about that, I think it was his dissertation, and he titled it, Daar werd om het zeerste uitgekreten. That means, translated, they screamed there at the loudest. That was the chaos in the Reformed churches in that time. And I'm talking about the 17th century. So, for 150 years, the organ was not used to accompany the congregation. The chaos was that big that someone all of a sudden got a bright idea. Why don't we accompany the congregation and use the organ for that? That was around about 1700. And then they started for the first time using in the one city after the other, they fought each other, for example, and used the organ. Finally. So that was a great thing to have. Um, the organ was built most of the time in the tower. The tower was the property, not of the church, but of the local council. Because the tower was usually seen as the last form of defense. If a city was conquered, you could still withdraw into the tower and defend the city from there. So in the tower wall, there was an opening and they placed an organ in there. So now let's go to why do, does an organ have more than one manual? Um, they did it already from the beginning because you could put lots of pipes in an organ and you can make these pipes sound differently. Got here a few organ pipes. If there's one of the children who want to blow one, you may come here. Try one. Is there one? You want to blow a pipe? Gently blow through that and let me hear the sound. That's already better, yeah. You try that. What you can do, put your hand around it and then blow like that. You blow that at the same time. Oh, and it doesn't sound too bad together. <laughs> you would like to have a go through? Yeah. Now, I do a trick. There is, in the top is a stopper, they call that. It is blocked off. I take it out. Now you blow it. 
nothing. You try. Maybe you can do it. Oh, crap. Dang it. Oh, that's a disappointment. See if I... I see if I can do it. It's a little right. hole in it. That it is really hard. Yeah. No, it doesn't do it anymore. Right. That, the so the pipe is meant to be stopped. They didn't know that for some open pipes work as well. May I have that one for a moment? See if we take that the stopper out of it. I'll see if we can blow this. Not very well because that is loose. It's a bit of a hollow sound, is it? Yeah. So it works. Thank you for that. Yeah. You may sit down. If you after uh, after this recital, come over here. You can have another blow. Yeah. And try a few more things. Good. Thank you. <laughs> well, that idea works for the smallest pipe. This is the foot of the pipe, and the top bit is the smallest bit of it. I hope you don't have a hearing aid on, because that is terrible. Um, and now the, the thing that happens is, if I close it off, it halves the frequency. There's a birdie in it, yeah. So that's what we can do. Um, so there are two ways, and we have it here in the organ as well. On the second manual are Three new stops in a total of 168 pipes. If I calculate right, that's three times 56, 168 pipes here. Yeah. Um, the first row here, just behind the front, you can see them, are pipes of this sort. Stopped. Got the right stopper, yes. Um, <clears throat> if you stop a pipe, not only sounds it an octave lower, the character of the sound is different too. It becomes a fluty. If the pipe were open, it has more of a string tone. That's what you see in these pipes here in the front. These are all open and have a different character of sound. These things are used mainly in an organ, apart from a reed stop, but that's a different story altogether. It's like a clarinet. So I'll let you hear what you can do with two keyboards. If both keyboards would sound the same, that would not be that much fun. You would like to have some, something that sounds all of a sudden different. So, contrast is one one. Sorry. Pardon? No, we're not playing anything yet. Not, not yet. <laughs> so, this is the bottom keyboard, the great. Same chord on the top keyboard. The difference between open pipes and stopped pipes. That's one option you have. Then there is the option you just heard, and Jared Jer did it in the psalm. He used one hand on the top keyboard, and the other at the bottom, and the feet in the pedal. Actually, what you're looking at is not one organ, that's three organs in the one case. So you have the bottom keyboard called the grate, that has its own pipes, its own mechanism, and the same for the second keyboard, has its own pipes, its own keyboard and mechanism. Same for the pedal, that's actually an organ on its own. So if you see in America, they have seven keyboards, of course, and a couple of hundred stops, and these are the largest organs, they have the seven or eight organs in the one case. Well, sometimes divided in different directions, electrically connected, but it's a different story. So contrast and accompaniment, uh, I'll give a an, an demonstration of a way of a company with different, with different sounds, like this. Uh. So you can have different sounds combined like that. Then. Another option is, oh, I get entangled in this thing. Uh, you can take a pipe and cut it in half. Then it sounds twice as high. So that's why we have on the, you see numbers on here. 
numbers 8842 and there 842 as well. Every time the pipe is halved, so it sounds an octave higher. So if I take now this, this pipe here in the middle, that is about one foot long. Over there, it is half a foot long, an octave higher. If I now open the stop and I put a four foot pipe with it, there it is. If you go still higher up, there, here it comes. Uh, this two foot. So I've got three different pitches on the one key by the three years pipe. That's how Nokon works. Can talk about it for a longer time, there are many more things to it, but that's basically it. Largest pipe, if you stand here to the side, you can see that one. Eight foot long, but it's stopped. That means that the frequency is halved. That's in the vicinity of about 50, 40, 50 hertz. If you've got the PA system at home, you try to get that tone out of your loudspeaker that you have a good system. It's very low. You can hardly hear it, you feel it. Here's the Bourdon 16. It's called Bourdon, isn't it? Yes. French word, Bourdonné, means to hum. And on some spots in the church you can hear the tone, other spots you can't hear it. You can reinforce it by coupling it. That's a nice thing. A coupler connects the key to the keyboard. So let's do that to the second keyboard, because of the second keyboard now. So the eight, a pipe an octave higher comes with it. See the difference, hear the difference. Oh, sorry, I got the wrong coupler open, this one. Now there's all of a sudden the tone. And still there are places in church where it is louder than others. It has to do with the enormous wavelength of this sound. If I go up the scale, and take an octave, still increases. Right, these are the possibilities of the organ. <laughs> uh, that was basically it, I think I want to say, and it's about time to start playing something. How many pipes do we all have all together? There on the bottom of the keyboard we have 496 pipes, plus the new pipes, 168, makes a total of 664 pipes in this case, all together. That was one of the problems. I wish I had designed the case 100 millimeters deeper. It would make the work a lot easier. <laughs> So, uh, some of the repertoire. I'm going to play uh, a Handel organ concerto. Now, you know Georg Friedrich Handel, he wrote the Messiah, but he also wrote music for, music for instruments, a wide variety of instruments, and organ was one of them. But don't think of an organ like this. It was a very small thing with about four stops, not more than that, and a small orchestra. So a concerto comes from to compete, two different groups playing, in this case an instrument and an orchestra playing, and I don't have the orchestra here. So a famous French organist was so kind to rearrange the music for organ only. So the orchestral part and the organ part are in my score and play them in turn. And of course then you play the orchestral part on the bottom keyboard, and the organ part on the top, key the top keyboard. That's two different organs playing together. It is called the cuckoo and the... Is that a thing come off? Sorry. No, that's uh, all under control there. I have no say in that. <laughs> uh, the cuckoo and the nightingale, it was nicknamed that because Handel wrote 16 organ concertos. And this is one of them. And this is the second movement out of that organ concerto. And boys and girls, you can hear the birds. 
a cuckoo and a nightingale. If you have never heard a nightingale before, you can hear it now. Change to the old.
state, I think, according to the program, yeah, with some birds, that's right. The next composer is Joseph Haydn. He wrote a big oratorium about the creation. He's well known for that. Um, he was asked to write some very special music. There was a new sort of instrument, and this was the, the, the late Baroque was the time of new mechanical inventions. That was the, the fashionable thing to have. If you were rich enough to pay for that, you had also fan, fancy things in your home that could go around and play and move and saw little puppets in it, whatever. Well, they had in those days already something like that. You also know the smallest organ in the world is a cuckoo clock. That has two tiny little bellows inside and two little pipes. And when it is eight o'clock, then the bird comes out and you hear eight times, cuckoo, cuckoo, and so on. Yeah. So that was the smallest one. But some people were richer than others, and they had a clock, a grandfather clock, a big standing clock, and on top of that, the clockwork with heavy weights inside, and there was a mechanism that opened, that uh, uh, moved two small bellows in there, and there was a little organ in there. Of course, with very small pipes, only in the range up here from middle C, further up, and not all the pipes were there, only the pipes you needed for that particular tune or melody. So Joseph was asked to write a composition for an organ clock. I've got two pieces. Uh, one I use with the eight foot stop and the other with the four, four foot. And you hear the nice sound of the two, two new flutes on the second manual. As a matter of fact, they had also a little <laughs> machine. This was funny. If you had a bird in a cage and the poor thing didn't want to sing because it was too miserable, then you could buy a little organ with five or six pipes and with the handle it, you could turn it and the thing made fluty sounds and the bird started to sing. You try that. So for, first with the four-foot flute. By the way, there was one thing we forgot. This organ has also a new tremolant. The old one was a bit, uh, had the character of its own and stopped at times. This one gives a nice, even, wavy sound in the tone. Yeah. Made that as well. Yeah, here we go. Now with the other stop.
Nou, en dus weer de toepies voor een ogenklok. Zijn voor die doe je The Psalms were more widely known also in those days than we think. We think that was something typical for the Reformed churches. No, they came originally from France. And in Germany, in the Lutheran churches, there were quite a number of hymns, they call them hymns, but were psalm tunes. And this, is, this composer was so impressed with this melody that he wrote 12 variations on the one psalm. We don't play all 12 of them, you don't worry about that. It is only two, so the two last ones. The one is for trio playing, that means I can use one keyboard to play one melody on, and the second keyboard for another tune, or for the main tune actually, and accompaniment with the pedal. So three instruments really playing together. And the second variation is a full stop one. If you have e-plugs, you may put them in.
Well, the last is Psalm 146, a composition by Jan Zwart, Dutch organist, died in 1937. Uh, became very well known throughout the Netherlands and outside because of his variations and introductions to psalms and hymns. He wrote some beautiful music in a romantic style and was very well received by the public. Thousands flocked to his concerts in Amsterdam where he was organist and uh, many records were already made in that time of him. Here you hear the contrast which are used between first and second manual. They start on the second manual and go over to the first, loud, soft, loud, soft all the time. Yeah. And all there. It starts from there.
participants for this demonstration. Um, I'd like to once again thank you very much for not only the work that you've done on the org, but also in preparation for this demonstration. Thank you to Trudy once more, and thank you all for coming here this afternoon and evening. And I think we should give a clap also to the social committee who have uh, organised the food uh, for us tonight. So let's give them a loud clap so they can hear us. And uh, I'd like to hand over to Mike now to uh, finish up with us in a prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, Mike. Well, if I learnt anything from this afternoon is that organists' fingers are like lightning. They never hit the same place twice. Um, I looked for some jokes to finish the evening with, and they're all mean. So what do you get if you drop an organ down a mine shaft, kids? A flat miner. And have you heard about the good organ player? No, neither have I. <laughs> no, in all dead seriousness, um, we forgot one person this evening, and that's uh, Jarrett, yourself. You didn't go on about yourself today. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for the work you've done as well. Um, you've put a lot of work into this, and to the detriment of the kids in school, I believe. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you in all seriousness. Thank you. All right, let us uh, bow our heads in a word of prayer. Our great God and Heavenly Father, we come before you again this evening, Lord, to thank and praise you. We thank you that we have such a close community of friends and family who could come together, Lord, to enjoy some company, some food, and also to sing your praises. Lord, we thank you that we could do so in all freedom, that we could praise and glorify your great and holy name. Lord, please accept our, our songs of praise. Father, we thank you that we have men who are capable and willing to do the things that we've seen today, Lord, in this work on the organ. We thank you that we've also got Jared, who plays here Sunday in, Sunday out, as Fred as well, from time to time. Father, we thank you that we have people who are willing to do this. Father, we thank the... Uh, Social committee who have organised this evening, we thank you for the work that they've put in behind the scenes that we don't see. Lord, we thank you that we could work together as a, a close-knit family. Father, please be with us now as we go from here. Lord, please keep us safe, grant us a good night's rest, that we may come back tomorrow, Lord, to, to once again praise and glorify your great and holy name. And Lord, to learn from your word. Lord, please hear our prayer in Jesus' name alone. Amen. Some uh, pipe work.